Today on Polymathy, how did Shakespeare speak? So, how did Shakespeare's actors pronounce their English in the year 1600? This is an important question because any poet or wordsmith leans upon the sounds of language in order to express not just aesthetic things, but drama, irony, and wordplay. These are evident in as many as thousands of different rhymes and puns that are lost on our modern ears with our modern dialect. And the biggest culprit was the great vowel shift, which was a transformation of the pronunciation of the English language, which ended sometime after Shakespeare. I have linked several videos that will go into more depth about Shakespeare's original pronunciation, otherwise known as OP. But there are two really important pioneers in our modern times who have spearheaded the effort to understand Shakespeare's pronunciation. And that includes the linguist David Crystal and his son, the Shakespearean actor Ben Crystal. Their works were the inspiration for the voice actor Paul Meyer to create a tutorial for how to pronounce Shakespeare in OP, in the original pronunciation. What follows? is that tutorial. Enjoy! Signature Sounds Number 1 What surprises many is that early modern English, E-M-E, -E, was a rhotic dialect, with heavy R coloration of vowels that are followed by R. The silent R of today's received pronunciation, standard British English, is a more recent development. Examples Nurse Start North Force Letter Air Flower Orsino Ferdinand Number 2 The Mouth Lexical Set this diphthong had a centered onset and started with the schwa, or neutral vowel, a, uh, resulting in o. Examples oat, load, known, count, crowed, bow. Number three. The price and choice lexical sets. This diphthong, too, had a centered onset and started with the schwa, or neutral vowel, e, uh, resulting in e. Examples. Price. Tribe. Time. Friday. Isle. Eider. Fight. Viola. And choice. Paint. Bile. Tie. A high. Royal. Number four. The goat, near, square, face, and cure sets. These vowels, diphthongs, two-stage vowels in RP and Gen Am, were more monophthongal in EME. We would have heard goat, fear, square, face, cure. Examples. Goat. Home. Near. Beer. Square. Bear. Bear. Face. Stay. Fatal. Cure. Tour. Poor. Number five. The happy lexical set. Crystal tells us that this unstressed syllable also had a neutral onset, like price, choice, and mouth. The result? E. Examples. Happy. Lovely. City. Baby. Money. Festy. Valley. Number six. The strut lexical set. Crystal suggests that the close, mid, back, unrounded vowel e uh, captures the likely quality of this vowel. Examples. Cup, rub, butter, love, 
monk, blood, hum, summer. Number seven, the trap, lexical set. Crystal suggests a more open front vowel than today's a, similar to the a vowel we hear in the dialects of Northern England. He includes ane and mani in this, although they fall into the RP dress set today. Ane and mane are still pronounced today in much Irish English, as they were in OP. Examples: trap, arm, scalp, ara, capulet, malvolio, Andrew, battery. Axion. Number eight. Since the lot and thought lexical sets were pronounced without the lip rounding of today's RP, Crystal directs us to the less rounded version spoken in mainstream American English. R is the vowel he suggests. Examples: lot, stop, rob, profit, honest, swan, knowledge. Want, watch, and daughter, awkward, art, call, stock. Number nine. Crystal cautions us to retain the lip rounding of conservative RP u in the goose lexical set, though he lists several words like fool, conclude, tooth, and proof. Today, part of the goose set for which he recommends u, which allows puns such as that in the full dish of full. This creates some difficulty over words like blood and other double o words that are today part of strut. Confusion with words in the foot set like put, full, cuckoo, good, woman, could, is also possible. Proceed with caution. It is probable that both pronunciations would have been current in Shakespeare's time. Examples: loop, mood, dupe, Juliet, funeral, duty, fruit, beauty. Number ten. Crystal addresses the bath and start sets together, telling us that ah. Is the target, though are coloured are in the case of start words, of course. Interestingly, words like warm, war, quarter, and worn, today members of the North Force set, were pronounced in EME identically to start words, which are all spelled with the letter A. He also lists daughter, now a thought set word, and suggests daughter. Examples: staff, path, brass, blast, ask, master, basket, and start, art, barn, sergeant. Number eleven. Although we cover the heavy R coloration of this dialect in signature sound number one. Crystal additionally asks for a slightly different vowel shape for the nurse set, slightly more open. R is his suggested target. Examples: usurp, turn, mercy, shirt, assert, earth, worst, scourge. Number twelve, the fleece lexical set. Whose spelling nearly always involves the letter e, calls for the slightly more open vowel e, or one even closer, e. Examples: say, failed, bay, papal, breathe, complete, Caesar, phoenix. Additional features: a. Crystal encourages us to be more casual in our diction than is the fashion in today's British stage speech, using lots of elision, weak forms, etc. For examples, the following words in unstressed positions 
should involve the weakest form possible, as indicated. N, z, bin or bun, fur, a, a, mi, min, zin, mus, a, a, um, z, 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 t. The speech is generally rapid, trippingly on the tongue, as Hamlet counsels. B. Initial H on he, he's, him, his, him, her, hers. In unstressed positions will be dropped. Hence, what's his name? Who's her best friend? Crystal recommends H dropping on more substantial words too on occasion. He tells us that H was very variable. It would be dropped by lower class speakers generally, but upper class speakers might drop it too without being penalized. Everything would depend on the extent to which they had learned to pronounce following the spelling, as Holofernes recommends. C. Medial V and voiced TH, V constants in some common words will be elided, hence HEN, IN, SEM, LEM, DIL, HERE, THERE. D. Abundant elision of vowels. Crystal cites the following examples. The unworthiest. Delivery. Levenin. Venmus. Everybody. Often, scansion of the verse line will alert you to a likely elision. E. ING suffixes should be reduced to in. No connotation of reduced social status attaches to this, as is often the case today. Hence, Colin, singin, prayin. F. WH should be aspirated in words like which, when, why, whither, whence, etc., where today's dominant pronunciation is w. Who, whom, whole, etc., today pronounced with h, do not get this treatment, of course. G. Many polysyllabic words have a different stress pattern today than in EME. Particularly when these words are part of a verse line, the OP rhythm becomes important. Consider the three examples crystal sites, canonize, advertise, galantry. There's a very full list of such polysyllabic words in Shakespeare's pronunciation. H. Fuller soundings of S-I-O-N and T-I-O-N spellings, C-N instead of shun. Signature sounds in sentence context. Each sentence corresponds to the number of the signature sound on track one. I'll leave a short pause after each sentence for you to repeat. Number one. Her father burned the letters in the barn on Saturday. Number two. Oh no, down in the mouth? Number three. Annoying flies might fly noisily at night. Number four. No fear where faint art endures. Number five. Silly Wally Dally near Appy Sally. Number six. Much luck becomes the one who loves. Number seven. Clarence married Anne and had Appy family. Number eight. I thought I'd stop at lots of naughty chocolate shops. Number nine. Whose new blue shoes do you view on Tuesday? Number ten. The master started asking his art to dance.
Number 11. Wardy Bert burned the dirty shirts on purpose. Number 12. The same deceived by brave dreams at sea. Coordination exercises. The numbers under the text refer to the signature sounds needed. Again, I'll leave a short pause after each sentence for you to repeat. Number one. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Number two. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks? Number three. If music be the food of love, play on. Number four. Oh, happy, some or other, some can be. Number five. Now all the youth of England are on fire. Number six. An easy lies dead that wears a crown. Number seven. Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind. Number eight. The quality in Marseille is not strained. Number nine. The man that hath no music in himself is fit for treason, stratagems and spiles. Number 10. O oh, sharper than a serpent's tooth it is, to have a thankless child. Monologue 1. From King Lear. Act 1, Scene 2. Edmund's speech. I'll read it twice. Once, phrase by phrase, leaving pauses for you to repeat. And then, a second time, all the way through. Though nature art me goddess, to thy law me services are bound. Wherefore should I stand in the plague of custom? And permit the curiosity of nations to deprive me. For that I am some twelve or fourteen moonshine's lag of a brother. Why bastard? Wherefore base? When my dimensions are as well compact? My mind is generous and my shape is true. As honest madam's issue. Why brand us with base, with baseness, bastardy, base, base? Thou nature art me goddess, to thy law me services are bound. Wherefore should I stand in the plague of custom and permit the curiosity of nations to deprive me, for that I am some twelve or fourteen moonshine's lag of a brother? Why bastard? Wherefore base? When my dimensions are as well compact, my mind is generous and my shape as true as honest madam's issue. Why brand I us with base, with baseness, bastardy, base, base? Monologue 2, from A Midsummer Night's Dream, Act 2, Scene 1, Titania, read by Amy Virginia Buchanan. Again, she will read the piece twice, 
once phrase by phrase, leaving pauses for you to repeat, and then a second time, all the way through. These are the forgeries of jealousy. And never since the middle summer spring met we on ill, in dale, forest, or maid. By paved fountain or by rushy brook, or in the beach at margent of the sea, to dance or ringlets to the whistling wind. But with thee brawls thou hast disturbed our sport. Therefore the winds pipe into us in vain, as in revenge have sucked up from the sea, contagious fogs which fallen in the land. Of every Pelton River made so proud that they have overborne their continents. These are the forgeries of jealousy, and never since the middle summer spring met we on ill, in dale, forest, or maid, by paved fountain or by rushy brook, or in the beach at margent of the sea. To dance or ringlets to the whistling wind, but with the brawls thou hast disturbed our sport. Therefore the winds pipe into us in vain, as in revenge have sucked up from the sea contagious fogs which fallen in the land, of every Pelton river made so proud that they have overborne their continents. Burla, so 